Hey everyone, in this video we'll have a look at Merge Sword. And Merge Sword uses recursion as we'll see in this implementation. And I will explain recursion in depth later in the video. So if you have trouble understanding recursion, this video will hopefully make it clear for you. Now it's a divide and conquer algorithm, which means that it sorts the array in two phases, dividing or splitting the array, and then combining or merging them back in sorted order. Now the first phase is the splitting phase, and we begin with an unsorted array and divide it in half repeatedly until there are only one element arrays. Now in this implementation, when dividing an outsized array, the extra element always goes to the right array. For example, with five elements, the left array will have two elements and the right array will have three elements. And we continue splitting until there's only one element in each array. So the left array becomes two one element arrays. And for the right array, one part becomes a one element array, while the other becomes a two element array. And finally, that two element array is split into two one element arrays. And once we have split the entire array into one element arrays, we begin the merging phase, starting from the left side. So we'll first merge these two one element arrays into sorted order. Then we'll do the same for these two one element arrays. Next, we merge the one element and the two element arrays. And at this point, both sides are merged and sorted. So finally, we merge these two sorted arrays together. And with that, our array is now completely sorted. So let's take a closer look at our five element array and see how it works. Now to split the array, we don't make a new one. Instead, we do it in place using a few variables. And to do this, we need to find the midpoint by adding the start index to the end index and dividing it by two. Now for our five element array, the start index is zero and the end index is five, which is derived from array.link. So the midpoint is zero plus five divided by two, which is two. So everything from index zero to two, excluding two, goes into the left array, and everything from index 2 to 5, excluding 5, goes into the right array. Now, we continue dividing the left array until we have only one element arrays before moving on to the right side. And this is just how the algorithm is implemented. You'll understand why once we get into it. Now, for our two element array, the start index is 0 and the end index is 2. And we always take one index larger because the last index is not included. So the midpoint is 0 plus 2 divided by 2, which is 1. So everything from index 0 to 1, excluding 1, goes into the left array, and everything from 1 to 2, excluding 2, goes into the right array. Now, at this point, we already have one element arrays on the left side, so we'll continue splitting the right array. So for our three element array, the start index is 2, and the end index is 5, so the midpoint is 2 plus 5 divided by 2, which is 3. So everything from 2 to 3, excluding 3, goes into the left array, and everything from 3 to 5, excluding 5, goes into the right array. Now, the left array is already a one element array, so we don't have to do anything with it. So we'll just continue splitting the right array. And here, the start index is 3 and the end index is 5. So the midpoint is 3 plus 5 divided by 2, which is 4. So everything from 3 to 4, excluding 4, goes into the left array. And everything from 4 to 5, excluding 5, goes into the right array. And with that, we split the entire array into one element arrays. Now let's merge them back together. And as mentioned earlier, we begin by merging the one element arrays, starting from the left. And remember, when we merge, the resulting array will be sorted. Here's how it works. We start by merging the two one element arrays on the left side. And to do that, we create a temporary array large enough to hold all the values. We have two one element arrays, so our temporary array is of link 2. We have a variable i set to the first index of the left array, which is 0. And we have a variable j set to the first index in the right array, which is 1. We compare the element at index i with the element at index j. Since 1 is less than 3, we copy 1 to the temporary array first. Now, since only element 3 is left, we copy it to the temporary array. And finally, we copy the elements of the temporary array back into the original array. And now we're merging these two one element arrays on the right side. We have two elements, so we'll create a temporary array with a length of 2. We set i to the first index of the left array, which is 3, and we set j to the first index of the right array, which is 4. We compare the element at index i with the element at index j. Since minus 5 is less than 2, we copy minus 5 to the temporary array first. Now 2 is the only element left, so we copy it to the temporary array. And finally, we copy the elements of the temporary array back to the original array. Now we're merging this one element array with this two element array. And we have three elements, so we're going to create a temporary array of link 3. We set i to the first index of the left array, which is 2. And we set j to the first index of the right array, which is 3. We compare the element at index i with the element at index j. 
Since minus 5 is less than minus 4, we copy minus 5 to the temporary array and we increment j by 1. Again, we compare the element at index i to the element at index j. Minus 4 is smaller than 2, so we copy that to the temporary array. Now 2 is the only element left, so we copy it to the temporary array. And finally, we copy the elements of the temporary array back to the original array. And with that, we're done with merging the left and right arrays. So our final step is to merge these two together. We have five elements, so we're going to create a temporary array of length 5. We set i to the first index of the left array, which is 0. And we set j to the first index of the right array, which is 2. We compare the element at index i to the element at index j. Minus 5 is less than 1, so we copy that to the temporary array and we increment j by 1. And again, we compare the element at index i to the element at index j. Minus 4 is less than 1, so we copy that to the temporary array and we increment j by 1. And again, we compare the element at index i to the element at index j. 1 is less than 2, so we copy that to the temporary array and we increment i by 1. Again, we compare the element at index i to the element at index j. And 2 is less than 3, so we copy that to the temporary array. Now 3 is the only element that's left, so we copy it to the temporary array. And finally, we copy the elements of the temporary array back to the original array. And at this point, the entire array is sorted. Now, let's see how we can implement this algorithm. And just so you know, the implementation that I'm going to show you has a couple of optimizations, which we'll discuss shortly. But for now, we'll start by defining our method. And we'll call it merge sort. We'll pass it an integer array. And we'll call it input. Along with the start and end indices. And we're going to call it from the main method. And we'll pass it the array. 0 as the start. And array.length as the end index. So we want this method to keep dividing the array until we only have a one element array. So we check if the difference between end and start is less than 2. And if true, we return. Because if the array has a length of 1, we don't need to split it further and we stop calling this method recursively. Now if its length is more than 1, we'll initialize a variable called mid and set it to start plus end divided by 2. And then we'll call merge sort once again. But now we'll pass it the array and start index. But for the end index, we'll pass it the midpoint. And this is how we logically divide the array. So this method keeps getting called, but each time it uses the midpoint as its end index. And this way we always get half of the array. And it continues dividing the left side until we reach the point where we only have one element array. Now this only handles the left side, so we have to call merge sort once again, but now we want to handle the right side, so we'll pass the array, but for the start index we'll use the midpoint. And then the end. Now as mentioned earlier, the implementation will handle the entire left side first, and now you can see why, because the method keeps getting called recursively with merge sort for the left side. And it only returns when the left side becomes a one element array. And only then the methods in the call stack can continue executing. And it's at that point that they can call merge sort on the right side. Now I will give a detailed explanation on how recursion exactly works here soon. So don't worry if this is confusing. Now once we split the entire right side, we want to merge the arrays back together in sorted order. So we'll create another method. And we'll name it merge. And we'll pass it an integer array. Along with the start, meet, and end indices. And for now, let's just return. And let's call it here. And we'll pass the input array along with the start, meet, and end indices. Now, don't worry about the implementation for now. We'll cover that soon. But first, let's see how the recursion exactly works here. So initially merge sort is called from the main method. Now within this method we check if it's a one element array. It's not so we calculate the midpoint which is 2. 
And then we call merge sort for the left side and merge sort with the value 0 and 5 is pushed onto the call stack. Now within this method we check if it's a one element array. It's not so we calculate the midpoint which is 1. Next we call merge sort for the left side. So merge sort with the value 0 and 2 is pushed onto the call stack. Now here we have a one element array so it returns immediately and the method in the call stack can now continue. But this time we're going to call the second merge sort for the right side of the array. And merge sort with the value 0 and 2 is pushed onto the call stack. And here also we have a one element array so it returns immediately and the method in the call stack can continue. Now at this stage both merge sort methods have returned and we have divided the array into two one element arrays. So finally the merge method is called and it sorts and merges these arrays. And once that is done, this method in the call stack can continue. But now we call merge sort for the right side and merge sort with the value 0 and 5 is pushed onto the call stack. Within the method we check if it's a one element array and it isn't, so we calculate the midpoint which is 3. Next we call merge sort for the left side and merge sort with the values 2 and 5 is pushed onto the call stack. We check if it's a one element array, which it is so it returns immediately. Now the method from the call stack can continue. But this time we're going to call the second merge sort for the right side of the array and again merge sort with the values 2 and 5 is pushed onto the call stack. We check if it's a one element array and it isn't, so we calculate the midpoint which is 4. We call merge sort for the left side and merge sort with the values 3 and 5 is pushed onto the call stack. Here we have a one element array so it returns immediately and the method in the call stack can continue. And we call the merge sort for the right side and again merge sort with the values 3 and 5 is pushed onto the call stack. And here also we have a one element array so it returns immediately and the method in the call stack can continue. And at this stage both merge sort methods have returned and we have divided the array into two one element arrays. So now we can call the merge method to sort and merge these arrays. And then this method from the call stack can continue. And within this method we already gone over the left and the right side. So again we can call merge here to sort and merge these arrays. And then this method from the call stack can continue. And also here we covered the entire left and right side of the array. So now we can finally merge them by calling the merge method. And at this point we're done. Alright, now that we understand how the recursion works, let's continue implementing the merge method. And we start by creating an if statement. So if the element at mid minus 1 is less than or equal to the element at mid, we don't need to do anything and we simply return. Now let's see what this means. As you know, we're working with two sorted partitions. So in both partitions, the first element is the smallest and the last element is the largest, right? Now mid minus one is the last element in the left partition and mid is the first element in the right partition. So essentially we're asking if the largest element in the left partition is smaller or equal to the smallest element in the right partition. And if this is true, it means that all the elements on the left are smaller than or equal to the smallest on the right. Therefore, we don't need to do anything because they're already in their correct position. Because as I said, we're dealing with two sorted partitions. Now, if that's not true, it means we must sort them first. So we'll start by setting i to start, which is the first index in the left partition, and j to mid, which is the first index in the right partition. And we have a variable called temp index which will initialize to zero, and this will keep track of our position in the temporary array. And we'll create an array named temp with a length of end minus start. And this ensures it's large enough to hold all elements in both partitions. Next, we want to compare the element at index i in the left array with the element at index j in the right array. So we set up a while loop which continues as long as i is less than mid, because when i equals mid, we finish traversing the left array. And as long as j is less than end, because when j equals end, we finish traversing the right array. So once we traverse either the left or the right array, we exit the loop. Now inside the loop, we want to copy to temp using temp index and with a post increment operator. And what this does is, it first assigns the element at temp index and then increments it by 1. So if temp index is 0, it assigns the value at index 0 and then increases the index to 1. And then we check if the element at index i is less than or equal to the element at index j. And if true, we assign it to input i and increment i. 
and otherwise we assign it to input j and increment j. Now, the loop exits after traversing either the left or the right partition, so there might be some remaining elements in one of the partitions. Now, if there are elements in the left partition, we need to copy them in their correct positions. However, if there are leftovers in the right partition, we don't need to. For instance, let's say we're merging these two partitions. We compare 2 to 3 and copy 2 to temp, then compare 4 to 3 and copy 3 to temp, and finally compare 4 to 6 and copy 4 to temp. And at this point we're exiting the loop because we fully traversed the left partition. However, we haven't handled 6, but there's no need to, because when we copy the temporary array back, it will fill its current positions. So handling 6 would mean overriding it by itself. Now, for the left partition, instead of copying them to temp, we'll directly copy them into the original array using system.arrayCopy. Now, the first parameter is a source array, which is input. And we begin copying at index i, because when we exited the loop, we were at that index, so that will be the starting index if there are leftovers in the left partition. And our destination array is also the input array, and we want to copy into this array starting at position start plus temp index. So let's say we added three elements to the temporary array, then temp index would be three. Now let's say there's one more element in the left partition, then it means it's the largest element. So we want to copy it after the elements in the temporary array. And we'll do that by adding three to the start index. And by doing this, we're reserving the first three indices for the elements in the temporary array. Now here we determine the number of items we want to copy, which we set to mid minus i. For instance, if our left partition has two elements and we have one element remaining, then i would be one. And since mid is two, two minus one equals one, so we copy one element. Now, if there are no remaining elements, then we fully traverse the left partition and i would be two. And mid is also two, so two minus two equals zero. And in that case, we won't copy anything. Now, the final step is to copy the temporary array back into the original array. And once again, we'll use system.arrayCopy. The source array is the temp array, and we'll start at index 0, and we're copying into the original array, so our destination array is input. And we begin copying at the start position, and we want to copy temp index elements. So we're copying the same number of elements that we placed into the temporary array. And with that, we completed the implementation of merge. Now, let's see how this algorithm works. And to begin with, this algorithm is not in place. Now, the splitting phase is done in place. However, during the merging phase, a temporary array is created to merge each pair of arrays. The time complexity is O to the n log n, and the log is to the base 2 because we're repeatedly splitting the array in half during the splitting phase. So that's where the log n comes from. And then in the merging phase, we compare and copy the elements in sorted order, and that's where n comes from. And as a result, you have a time complexity of O to the n log n. And finally, it's a stable algorithm, because when we're merging, we check whether the element in the right array is greater than the element in the left array. And if it's not greater, or more important, if it's equal, then the element in the left array will be the one that's copied into the temporary array first. So the relative ordering of duplicate items will be preserved, and therefore this algorithm is stable. So this was it for merge sort. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you in the next video.